of the year so far apart from uh, Passover when the Lord died. Yeah, John, John. Give me a Okay, welcome to Speaker's Corner. Uh, today is Pentecost Day. The day Pentecost, I take out some Latin, oh sorry, Greek, and it means 50 days. So, a few weeks ago, all the Christians throughout the entire world were celebrating uh, what we call Easter, but the Bible calls it Passover. That is when the Lord Jesus died at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and then he gave up spirit at 3 o'clock. For three hours, he was being crucified by the Roman soldiers. And then Jesus said, finally, it is finished. And then he gave up his spirit to the Father. And from then on until uh, the third day, Jesus was dead and buried in a tomb. You can visit the tomb. It's on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem in Israel. Right there, there's a mountain called the Mount of Olives. The reason why it's called the Mount of Olives is because they grow olives. Okay? So that name was given to that mountain. That mountain is also called Mount Zion as well. Because the word Mount Zion is mentioned in the Bible hundreds of times. And it does not mean a Zionist. It means the mountain of God where Abraham was about to kill his son Isaac on the mount. Sometimes also called Mount Moriah. Okay? So that is where the Lord Jesus came as a sacrifice of sin, for sin. Because the Lord Jesus had no sin. He is sinless. Whereas all of us are tainted with sin. S-I-N. Sin is a poison that clouds our heads and our hearts. Where do you think people get the idea of fighting one another from? The Bible says sin. Very simple, very straightforward. So if you remove sin, you remove the idea of fighting your neighbors. Why did Russia under Putin go and invade a country called the Ukraine last year? Because of sin in Putin's life and sin. And many Russians who say it's a good thing to do. Okay, it's a wrong idea. It's a wrong thing to do because of sin. And God's word tells us all oh, are fallen short of the glory of God. Now, who is the glory of God? The Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus is perfect. I'm not perfect. And neither are you. The word of God says, examine yourselves. Right? Research into your heart and see if you're perfect before God who is holy. In the book of Isaiah and also in Revelation, the last book in the Bible, there are angels who cry out every 24 hours a day, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They do not say man is holy. They say God is holy. Okay? Now today... Is the day when we also remember that after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead, he stayed for 40 days with the apostles, teaching them, and as the word of God says, showing you infallible proofs he was risen from the dead. Because some people probably thought, really, is he, is he the same one that died? For example, Thomas. Thomas was a man, an apostle of the Lord Jesus. And when the other disciples said, Thomas, the Lord Jesus has already been resurrected. Thomas did not believe that report. And Thomas had to wait eight days before the Lord Jesus appeared to Thomas. And in John chapter 20, Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And the Lord Jesus accepted the declaration of Thomas. Now remember, Thomas was Jewish. And every Jewish boy and girl knows there's only one God. And yet Thomas, the Jewish apostle, 
talks to the Lord Jesus and says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Thomas was not committing blasphemy. You are a blasphemer. Are you sinless? No. Well, Jesus has no sin. So Thomas was correct. Jesus is Lord and God. Now, Jesus told the apostles to wait in Jerusalem, in Israel, for the coming of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who would come as fire on the disciples so that the apostles and disciples would have power to go out from Judea to Samaria and then to the rest of the world with the good news about Jesus Christ. So today is this day 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, came down as if for fire and anointed the, the apostles to preach the gospel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when the Lord Jesus was growing up as a human being, before Joseph and Mary, guess what? Every year, the Lord Jesus read some books. And number one on the hit parade was the Song of Solomon, the Song of Songs. This book is in the Old Testament. Now, many Christians do not really understand why the book of the Song of Songs is there. Neither do they understand why the book of Ruth or Esther are there in the Holy Bible. But there's a simple reason. If you're Gentile, like many Christians are, they forget the Jewish roots of the Bible, of the faith that Christ established. So consider this. The book of Song of Songs was actually read by the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, every Passover. Okay? It is the book that rabbis and the people who go to synagogue would read at Passover. Because Song of Songs is a story about God and Israel. God taking the Jewish slaves out of Egypt and giving them salvation. So Passover is when they kill the lamb and they're two years old as a reminder that they need the saints to be covered by blood. Now, Jesus read that 30 times in 30 years. And finally, he became the Passover lamb. Second, the book after that is called the book of Ruth. Ruth. Ruth is the book about a woman who is not Jewish but believes in the God of Israel. And this book is read at, past, at Pentecost. Today, Shavuot. Okay? So let me ask you a simple question. If you're a Christian, when is the last time your pastor read the book of Ruth at Pentecost today? None, I suppose. Why is that? I'll tell you why. You may disagree. I believe it is because, again, we have forgotten the character of the Bible. The Bible comes from God, the Holy Spirit, using Jewish men and women. Okay? So the, so the features of the Bible from Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Elisha, Matthew, Luke, Peter, uh, is all Jewish. But we don't understand this. So we don't read the book of Ruth. And yet, if you go to a synagogue this week, you'll find to your utter amazement, Jews are reading the book of Ruth. Let me go further. The book of Ruth is read at the barley harvest. At harvest. Okay? Jesus said, look upon the harvest. It is ripe. For what? Collecting. John chapter 4. Right? So we're supposed to enter the harvest. Now, Ruth was a foreigner. 
She lived in a country called Moab. Moab was on the eastern side of Israel and almost close to what you call Jordan today. The Moabites, they came from the family of Lot. Right, if you read Genesis. But there's something wrong about the family history. That is why the Moabites were never encouraged to come into Israel. Okay, contact. Nonetheless, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, so that includes Ruth. Ruth is a whosoever because Ruth was a pagan that believed in Jesus Christ and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, right, who had left Israel because there was a famine of food. You talk about the cost of living in England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland today. It's the inflation so high. It's hard to buy bread. Well, there was no bread in Israel in the times of the judges when Naomi was alive. So consequently, Naomi with her husband left Bethlehem, right? And they went to Moab. And there they stayed. And then tragedy struck. The husband of Naomi died. The two sons of Naomi and, and her husband also died. So Naomi was only left as a widow woman with two daughters-in-law. Okay. Ruth and the other one called Opa. Now the name Ruth means beautiful. And that's the character of Ruth in the book of Ruth. She is a beautiful woman who is righteous before God. Just like Mary and Joseph in the New Testament. The Bible says Joseph was a just man. And Mary was also a just woman. And Ruth was also a just woman. So Ruth accepted the message of God through her mother-in-law. Praise God for God-fearing mothers-in-law. I've heard too many jokes against mothers-in-law. But this mother-in-law was a God-fearing, honoring woman, Naomi. So Ruth observed what the mother-in-law was up to. She spoke and acted as a God-fearing woman. Ruth then says, because Naomi says, look, I don't have any more children to give you as a husband. Right? And now Ruth says, don't worry about that. I'll come with you. Where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Your God will be my God. So don't tell me to go back to Moab. Are you going back to Moab? The worries of the world? Instead of coming to the Lord Jesus as Ruth. Okay. In chapter 1 in Ruth, it says, quote, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land of Israel and a certain man from Bethlehem. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, the house of bread. Jesus, when he came, said, I am the bread which comes down from heaven. And they go, what? He said, aren't you the son of Joseph and Mary? So how can you say, I'm the bread which came down from heaven? Because Jesus did not come from the world. He came from heaven. All of us here, 100%, are from the earth. You're born in London. You're born in New York. You're born in Singapore. You're born in parts of Africa, South America, whatever. So all of us are born from this world. But Jesus said, <laughs> sorry, I'm from heaven. So Jesus is different straight away. Adam did not come from heaven, born from the dust, the dirt of the earth. In fact, that's what the word Adam means, man from the dirt. 
Jesus was not created, he's the creator. That's why Jesus said, I am from above, you are from beneath. And everybody said, no, 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 no. Jesus says, of course I'm saying the truth. Am I a liar? Am I a lunatic? No, I tell you the truth. Okay? Now, this famine was severe in Israel in the days of the judges. Okay? So this family went to Moab because there was food there. But the tragedy struck. The two husbands died. And the husband of Naomi also died. So she's one woman grieving, distressed. But God likes to look after those in affliction. Those are distressed. So Naomi said to her daughters-in-law, two of them, go, go back to Moab, to your mother's houses. One of them said, okay, I'm off. But the other one, Ruth said, no, 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 I'm coming with you. <laughs> She's stuck like glue. Now, when Ruth come, comes to Bethlehem, right, after declaring her love for God, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. When you die, will I die, and there will I be buried. She knew what she believed in. Do you? Yeah. You can ride bicycles today, but are you on the journey of life? When you finish racing on your bicycles, you're gonna meet God in eternity. Are you ready to meet God after you finish riding your bicycles on the world? Probably not. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. No one riding a bicycle comes to the Father except by me. Now you may laugh and smile, but Jesus is waiting for you. Is he your friend or your judge? Yes, have fun. Enjoy the day. But at the end of the day, like uh, who's, the, who's the famous lady that just died? Tina. Tina was a strong woman. But she died as a Buddhist. So sadly, she went to hell. Unless she repented before she died. That's right. All these famous people, they teach rubbish from the world. So she was a famous dancer, a famous singer. But Tina died without Jesus Christ. And that's dangerous. Now, Ruth, the book of Ruth shall tells us that El Shaddai, in other words, God Almighty, is what? The one who keeps you. And then it says, call me Mara, said Naomi, for El Shaddai, the Almighty, has dealt very bitterly with me and when I went out full. But you say, God remembered Naomi, so Ruth, met a man called Boaz. Boaz in Hebrew is a man called the King's Man Redeemer. He's like Jesus Christ who redeems those sold to slavery of sin. So Boaz had a field and Ruth went to glean in it. In other words, collect what was left behind by the reapers. It's a Jewish custom that God told Moses, the poor, the strangers that come to Israel, they're allowed to take those bits of pieces that they left behind by the harvester, okay? So that they don't go hungry. If you're a poor man and you're in debt, the debt collector is not allowed to take your jacket. That's the law of God. God looks after the poor, the destitute. So Ruth was destitute, but God allowed a man that has integrity to come along. And his name was Boaz. And Boaz is the king's man redeemer. He came alongside Ruth and took her as his wife. And he gave her food. And at the end of the story, we find that the Bible tells us 
that uh, Ruth <laughs> became the great, 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 great grandmother of King David and the great, great, great grandmother of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. You see, the book of Ruth, which is read at Shavuot, Pentecost, is a reminder for Christians and Jews that Jesus is the King's man, Redeemer. He is the one who redeemed you from the ways of the world. If Jesus redeems you from sin. He paid the price at the cross. And then later, he sent the Holy Spirit to make sure you have power to grow as a Christian. Look around. <laughs> I'm sorry, young man. I'm not a bin collector, but you look like one of you. That was a great question. You, you look like one with a yellow jacket. But the bin's over there. God bless you. Now, Jesus is the king's man, redeemer. He comes and buys you back from sin by his blood. Boaz paid the price. You know, in Israel, if you are about to be a king's man, redeemer, you take off your shoe like this, and that would be the contract. You take off the shoe, bang. Okay, contract done. When Jesus died on the cross, the contract was done. Because instead of a shoe, you had the blood of Jesus. And the blood seals the contract between God and man. You say the blood of Jesus washes away all sin. Jesus Christ is the one who is the king's man, redeemer. In Islam, there is no such person. Because every Muslim is trying to be his own redeemer under Allah. But Allah does not forgive. I have asked Muslims for 30 years, have you got guarantees if you die tonight, you're going to go to paradise? No, I can't. But Jesus says, come to me, all oh, you that are heavy laden and heavy burdensome, and I'll give you rest. Isn't it strange? Muslims will say, peace be upon Jesus, peace be upon Moses, and peace be upon Muhammad. Jesus said, I give you peace. Okay? Jesus is the peacemaker between man and God. Therefore, the book of Ruth is read as God bringing Jews and Gentiles together uh, into a harvest. And at Pentecost today, we're reminded in the book of Acts, they were praying in the upper house and the Holy Spirit came down. And guess what? 3,000 men and women became Christians overnight. Wow! Can you imagine every single man and woman, boy and girl, a speaker's corner, straight away becomes a Christian. Pow! That's what happened on the first day of Pentecost, Shavuot. Okay? God keeps promises. Now, what about you and I? Are we going to follow like Ruth from Moab or Egypt into the promised land of Israel? Are we going to come to the rest?